and welcome to this math lesson where we are going to solve some equations with fractions now I know you are about to freak out because you don't like fractions but take a deep breath relax because let me show you how cool it is when we actually have fractions in a e equation we can get rid of it okay what do you mean well if if uh, the, the one cool thing about equations or the reason why I actually love equations is because there's only two rules the two rules is that I am not oh, let me do it like this I am not allowed that's not even red okay I'm not allowed to multiply or to divide with a zero okay that's the one rule I'm not allowed to multiply or divide with a zero okay so that's easy enough I can steer clear of that and I'm also uh, the, the thing that I should do is I should just do it on both sides I can do anything as long as I do it on both sides as, and as long as it's not multiply or divide by zero now that's brilliant and let me show you why because if I have a fraction like let's say I've got 1 over 7 and I don't want to have a fraction I can just multiply with 7 okay and the reason why that works is because now these two cancel or actually 7 divided by 7 is 1 and I'm just left with 1 it seems like I I cancelled away this fraction okay now in a normal expression when I have something like x squared over 7 I'm not just allowed to multiply by 7 that will change the value of that expression I would multiplying by 7 will tell me I'm using 7 of these so uh, I'm not allowed to just do this multiply by 7 that changes the value but in an equation if I had x squared over 7 is equal to 1 over 7 and I multiply with a 7 now well I'm allowed to do it because it's not 0 as long as I also do it on the other side that side as well so where my original equation would look something like this x squared over 7 equal to 1 over 7 multiplying both sides with a 7 like I did here would actually now cancel the denominators which is brilliant now I've got an x squared equal to 1 and we know this is a power equation or um, uh, quadratic equation however you want to look at it and we know this answer is well x can be 1 or x can be negative 1 okay now the only problem with this method is that if the unknown is in the denominator it might just turn out that I get an answer that is not allowed let me let me see if I can I can give you an example let's say we had x squared minus 1 over x is equal to uh, let's make it negative 1 over x now look what happens since I've got a fraction I'm allowed to multiply with that unknown on both sides okay and now I see this cancels with that one and that one cancels with that one brilliant I'm left with x squared minus 1 is equal to negative 1 so I get that x squared is equal to and then um, I see well no matter how you do it you can add a 1 on both sides just to get rid of that negative 1 on the left hand side or the right hand side however you wanted to to solve this and then you see x squared is equal to 0 well that means x is equal to 0 brilliant but just keep something in mind originally my rules were I am not allowed to multiply or to divide with zero and now you'll see but wait a minute I didn't multiply or divide with zero I multiplied with x but in the x in, <laughs> in the x in the end x was zero so I actually did multiply with a zero on both sides and from the beginning of my question I had X as an unknown and it was a denominator so I'm actually dividing with X and X is apparently equal to zero so I'm dividing with zero this is not allowed 
okay this answer is not applicable and since this is the only answer sometimes we get two answers so I might have gotten another answer but if I ha had another answer I th that would have been the solution but in this case we actually have no solution there's only one solution to this equation but that solution gives me zero in the denominator and that's completely unallowed when we're not allowed to do that uh, so that's not applicable but at the same time there's no other solution so this whole thing will have no solution or DNE does not exist okay so in the next couple of videos I'll look at a bunch of examples but let me just give you here just the basic steps of solving an equation the first thing we will do is we will multiply we will multiply every term with the LCM of the denominators okay so why are we multiplying every term with an LCM I thought we we're just multiplying with the denominator of every uh, of every term okay so let me quickly just show you again what the LCM is okay remember that the LCM the lowest common multiple okay of let's say we have three numbers okay number one number let's say three denominators let's call it denom1 denom2 and denom 3 okay so these are the three denominators that we have and we want to find the LCM of those three denominators what is the LCM well what we do is we will factorize this one into its factors let's call its factors X and Y we will factorize this one into its factors let's say it was Y and Z and we'll factorize this one into its factors let's say it's X and Z okay so now what we do to find the LCM is to make sure that we have each one of the factors and let's say this one was Z squared each one of the factors um, represented as many times so that each one of these denominators would be happy that all of its factors are present okay so uh, we'll start with the first one well with XY okay just the first one and then we'll uh, we'll take away any factors that was already there so Y is already there so we must still multiply with a Z okay so now we see okay this one the X is there there's one Z but there's one Z missing so we need to add another Z and this would be the LCM so actually what we what if this was in a, in a fraction and it would look like this okay we had a numerator divided by a denominator 1 okay plus a different numerator with denominator 2 equal to another numerator let's say that's numerator 2 numerator 3 divided by denominator 3 in my first step if I were to do this in steps instead of just multiplying from the beginning with the LCM I would have multiplied with denominator 1 but every term gets them multiplied with denominator 1 denominator 1 now you might say but aren't you supposed to multiply it once on this side and once on that side no remember I must multiply the whole side with denominator 1 and the whole side with denominator 2 on the other side and when I multiply this side every term gets multiplied with it okay so just keep that in mind okay so here what we have is that it cancels but now what happens here is some of the factors here might cancel with some of the factors there okay so imagine I now multiplied with XY XY now multiplied with XY that was denominator 1 and now denominator 2 was YZ so the Y's would have cancelled okay 
and here I would multiply, it's actually multiplying with xy, but nominator 3 is xz squared, okay, so the x's would cancel. Now in my next step, yes, I've gotten rid of my first f denominator, but my second denominator still had one factor left. And now to get rid of that one factor in the second uh, denominator, I must multiply every each term with that factor that's left, so that's z. So I must multiply with a z here, with a z here, and with a z here. Now what happens in this one, the, the y has cancelled because of the previous mul uh, multiplication. This time the z cancels because I decided to multiply with it and on this side one of the z's cancel. There's two z denominators and there's only one z there. So only one of them would cancel. So now I will have to, uh, I've gotten rid of the first denominator, the second denominator. Now the denominator on the other side is still a z. So I have to multiply with z again which means I'm now multiplying with z square actually, z square, z square and this time it will cancel. So that in the end what I actually multiplied with was with this number which was my LCM. So I don't know if this really illustrated it. I, I did it for me at least. So I hope you got something out of it. If, if not anything else then pretty colors uh, swarming around on your screen. Cool. So as soon as I have multiplied every term with the LCM you should be left with all denoms should cancel. Okay, if, if you did it right, you should not have any denominators left. If you've got more denominators that you started with, you did it wrong. Okay, so after, after everything has cancelled, you just simplify and solve as usual. Okay, whatever, whatever you're left with, it would probably be like a, a quadratic equation or even maybe a linear equation. You just simplify and, that's, and solve it as usual. But when you get the answer, you have to test your answer. This is incredibly important. And the reason why it is so important is because you were working with denominators you might have had an unknown in your denominator. Now if that unknown gets you an answer, you get an answer for your unknown, and now you plug it back into your original equation, and all of a sudden you get a zero for a denominator, well then there's two problems. One is you have a zero as a denominator, and that's just the end of the world right there. The second problem is you multiplied with that denominator. So you actually multiplied with zero, which was our original law rule. You're not allowed to do that. So there's two problems already. So what happens if you find an answer, and once you sub that answer back into your equation, and you see you, you get a problem by dividing by zero, just please write not applicable underneath that answer. So maybe you have another answer, and that answer is a isn't giving you the same problem, then great. If however you've got all of your answers is not applicable or you only have one answer and that answer is not applicable, then it is simple. There is no solution. No solution to this equation. And just, just state that clearly or you can say DNE does not exist. No ex solution for this exists. Uh, that's where I'm going to stop it. But I, I tell you what, just because I gave you this crazy thing right there. I'm going to in the next couple of videos do a few examples for you and you're going to see it's really really so simple. So please check out those videos and uh, and I'm sure you're going to feel very comfortable with fractions in an equation because you just get rid of them. See you there.